Hello, everybody. Oh, it's so bright here. Jeez. I can't, is anyone actually there? I can't see anything. Anyway, so um, thank you so much for having me today. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, where's the lady with the time? Uh, that's my biggest risk is waffling. I'm a big waffler, so I just need to watch you. So, um, Yes, as I said, thank you for having me. Um, when Rob, uh, the lovely, bearded, handsome Rob Gilmore, uh, suggested this topic, um, you know, it was obviously off the back of, of our deal with WPP, and I thought the, uh, the idea of talking about Quirk and myself sounded awful. Um, no one likes to talk about themselves, and it's, it sounds fairly boring. So I did my best to try... Ah, there we go. Hello. Um, I did my best to try and uh, extract some nuggets of hopeful wisdom uh, along uh, this uh, story, um, and I've come up with a few lessons. I didn't follow any of them, um, but I've learned them all in hindsight, and hopefully one or two of them at the very least will be useful to you guys. So my, my goal is not to bore you today. Uh, that's my only image. Um, so the Quirk journey... Um, Started really on Christmas Day, uh, 1998. I, it was my last day of waitering. Um, I was, uh, I thought, you know, waitering on Christmas Day would be quite profitable. I was quite wrong. And um, I was asked to clean up baby urine uh, by a very irate customer, and I refused. Uh, who wouldn't? And um, then my she called my manager over, Nenko was his name. Restaurant managers, aren't they special people? Um, and he said, you will clean up the urine. And I said, I will not. And I quit, and I promised myself I would never get another waitering job again. And then fast forward to the 18th of February, 99. Um, it was my 20th birthday. I uh, was on the couch at 3 a.m., probably being out, unlikely to be sober at that juncture. And... Um, I thought to myself, goodness me, I'm going to run out of money. And uh, I recalled my, my promise to myself, no more waitering jobs. I'd kind of run the mill of uh, pizza delivery as well. That is a pretty cool job, I've got to say. Um, and, um, and so I thought I'd better start a business. Uh, I had been a fairly entrepreneurial chap at school. Uh, I started 17 businesses there, all of which were shut down for being disruptive. Not in like a, you know, like a Google sense, but more of a you're not doing your homework sense. Um, and uh, so I thought, well, I like technology and I like marketing, so let's start a business around that. What should we call it? What a pretty cat I have. Her name is Quirk. Let's call it Quirk. So Quirk is named after my cat. Um, what I will leave you to find out is where my cat got her name. Anyway, so, um, so that was the start of that journey. And then on the 1st of March, 99, um, you know, the easiest way to start a business is to buy something and then sell something. So I, I bought the parts of a computer and I put it together rather badly, it turns out, and I sold it to a chap called Liam Gibbs, a good friend of mine. Um, and we even, it was like a, a stand thing with a quirk badge on the front. At the time, our logo looked like a TV, and I'm glad it no longer exists. Um, anyway, so that, that was great, and then two months later, this computer broke, and I realized I did not have the skills to fix it. Luckily, my friend Michael did, and there, 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 there was my first business partner. Um, and so I was kind of the, the front man, and he was the tech guy, and, and everything was great. And, and for, for the short term, we basically did everything that we could possibly do to make some money. Um, I do remember one particular incident, uh, crawling around on my hands and knees of the floor of a Rondebosch estate agent, a rather flatulent Rondebosch estate agent, uh, networking his office, and we did that kind of stuff. And um, eventually our, our client said we want websites. And um, so then we hired Liam Gibbs, and I made him use that same computer that he bought with me, and he's never let me forget that. And him and I started figuring out how to build what turned out to be awful websites. Thank goodness none of them exist anymore. Um, and that was fun. And um, we kind of cr cruised along, and then in 2000, I did my, uh, my marketing thesis in email marketing, and I thought, hey, there's a gap here to build some software to, to do email marketing. And so we then proceeded to build the world's worst piece of email marketing software, uh, which took about three years, um, and it was a part of crap. Uh, but in that process, because I guess the software was crap, we became quite good at email marketing. We also became quite good at SEO, because we wanted people to find our product and buy it online. Um, and then in 2001, the business changed fundamentally. Uh, a chap called Craig Raw joined us, uh, and is still with me to this day, uh, as our chief technology officer. And uh, that was the start of, of the successful quirk. And that kind of brings me to my first lesson, is surround, your, surround yourself with people better than yourself. And Craig really showed me the power of, of good senior people. And, you know, for the record, Craig was, had a great corporate job, he's a highly talented engineer, gave up his salary, gave me his life savings. He met me, a ginger ponytailed individual, on the dance floor at a trance party, and he gave me his life savings. Um, <laughs> and um, and that's, that's trust, and we've been together ever since. He's the yin to my yang. And, and I learned that day, and I've learned this lesson consistently, is that if you surround yourself with people better than yourself, uh, you'll do better. And I, and I, but it sounds obvious, but actually I don't think enough people do it. People tend to hire uh, people that are not as good as themselves, I think out of fear. 
Um, anyway, so, so you know, with Craig on board, we, we had some, some, some better skills, I guess, and we rebranded ourselves as Quirk eMarketing because we were good at web development and SEO and email marketing. We started pitching ourselves as a digital agency, and that was great. I mean, we were ahead of our time. 2002, I tried to sell, I said to a bank, a large blue bank, I said, I can get your site to the top of Google, and they said, that sounds like a waste of time, please go away. And, um, and that, you know, we were actually quite good at it, and it kind of brings me to my next lesson, which is about timing, is that it actually does matter. The problem is, it's that it's really hard to predict. So it's easy for me to stand here 10 years later and say, you know, we were ahead of the market. And it, it sounds good to say ahead of the market, but it's actually not, because if you're selling someone that no one's buying, uh, saying something that no one's buying, it's uh, quite a waste of time. Um, so we were quite poor for a long time. Anyway, then in 2004, uh, our employee number five, a chap called Scott Gray, a magnificently handsome ginger, uh, decided to um, leave for Johannesburg. And we thought, well, we like Scott, we'd like to keep him in the family. And so we said, why don't you start Quirk in Joburg? And then in 2005, uh, a lovely young lady, also an employee in Cape Town, Catherine Verbosity Parker, now black, um, she moved to London. And we thought, well, let's try the same thing again. And neither of them lasted more than a year or two. And that kind of brings me to my next lesson, which is... Um, Always play to people's strengths. So the reality is that Catherine and Scott are both incredibly talented and, and intelligent individuals. And we've continued working with him over the years. In fact, Scott is back at Quirk. He's been there for five years. And in my opinion, he's one of the best digital thinkers that we've got in this country. But um, Scott couldn't sell a blanket to an Eskimo. And so when you're the first guy in an office, you only have one job, and that's to bring in business. And, and we kind of thought, you know, because of his skills, he, he, that, he could, that he could do it because of intellig intelligence, but it just wasn't his thing. And um, I, gosh, I wish I'd learned that lesson uh, earlier, because it applies in so many areas of business, uh, myself included. I'm really, really crap at a lot of things. And um, since I learned that lesson, I've been surrounding myself with people who can fill in those many weaknesses, and our business is better as a result. Anyway, so we had this office in London. The exchange rate was about four zillion to one. And I thought, well, let's you know, make hay while the sun shines. And so I spent the next three years basically living between three offices, um, which sounds great, but it wasn't very effective. And uh, the business kind of meandered along during that time. And in 2007, we hired a chap called Nick Ray, uh, who uh, was working at Ogilvy in London at the time. He's a South African. And boom, suddenly our London agency took off, which brings me to my next lesson, which is if you're going to do something, commit fully. You know, we, we thought, oh, this opportunity, we try to spread ourselves across all of them, and as a result, we didn't commit fully to one thing. As soon as we did, it made all the difference. Uh, and once again, I wish I'd, A, keep learning that lesson, because I often don't, um, but if I'd had done that sooner, our London agency would have been a bit, bigger, better, stronger place today. Um, so then, um, in about 2006, 2007, 2008-ish, um, South African marketers suddenly woke up to digital. And I actually put it down to Facebook, as, as dirty as that makes me uh, feel, uh, because Facebook was really accessible. And I don't mean accessible in as in you could view it on a mobile device, but as in your granny can use it. And suddenly, all the marketers in South Africa are like, ooh, this internet thing, it's quite interesting. And let's spend some money there. And, um, but the problem is that no one really knew what was going on, and there weren't enough skills in the market. And Quirk had always been teachers. We lectured at universities and what have you, but there was no uh, uh, kind of resource for students and for marketers. And so we wrote a textbook, and we gave it away for free online. And without question, that's the best piece of marketing we've ever done, by miles. It's the best business card an agency could have. And uh, that brings me to my next lesson, which is not that. Um, it's this, sorry, they're out of line. Um, it's to be generous with your knowledge. Uh, knowledge is free to give it away. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of hold on to their ideas and their intellectual property. I don't believe in patents even. And I think if you, if you give it away, there's a kind of a weird concept of business karma. And um, I think it can come back to you. And I'd encourage everyone here to, to figure out what it is you know best and find a way to share it with the world. And I think you'll reap the rewards. So during that time, Sorry, thank you. Um, now don't clap, it wastes time. Um, so, so, so during that time, as I said, the market in South Africa started to lift up. And suddenly, where we were you know, three or four years earlier trying to sell something that no one was buying, suddenly we were kind of the hot kid on the street. Um, we were the only real uh, business positioned as a, as a, as a full-service uh, digital agency. Everyone else, else was kind of a web development company and things like that. And at the end of the day, it's about marketing. And, and that was our focus. We're marketers. And, um, and so suddenly our business was successful. And uh, that takes me to my, to my next uh, mis, uh, misordered uh, lesson, which is about luck. 
um, because we just happened to be in the right place at the right time, but I think it's our perseverance that put us there. And there were so many points along the way where we almost gave up, and there were so many points where our business almost died, and then through some miracle, it survived. And, and I think it's that perseverance that earned us the luck. You know, they say you make your own luck, and I think time in the game uh, increases the odds of that luck hitting you. And I think any entrepreneur or any person who's been successful who doesn't credit a lot of it to luck, I think is lying to themselves. Um, and we were just very fortunate to be there uh, right place, uh, right time. So my next point is around making yourself saleable, even if you're not for sale. So in about 2008, I think, 2009, we had our first approach uh, from someone who wanted to acquire Quirk. Now, it was way too early, we were having far too much fun, not that that's gone away, uh, we were growing nicely, but I also knew deep down that um, it's an entrepreneurial business, and to put it bluntly, it was held together with press stick and cardboard. And if we had gone through a due diligence process, we would have been laughed at. And um, that kind of worried me, so we didn't entertain those conversations, but they kept coming. And so in 2010, I thought to myself, um, maybe we need to be a bit more ready, just in case the right opportunity comes along. And uh, I had a mate uh, who, who was working in London as kind of a high-powered M&A lawyer, a chap called Andrew Allison, um, who loves a dress-up. And... Um, and I hired him as our CFO. Now, Andrew didn't have to have one day of finance experience. In fact, he tried to resign on day two. But I told him to put his panties back on and go back to his desk, and he is with us today. But um, Andrew's a very intelligent chap, and between the six months of us agreeing to him join and him moving to South Africa, um, I think just to prove it to me or himself, he did a master's in tax um, because he's that intelligent. Uh, he also was intelligent enough to hire Rachel to actually do the financial work for him. Um, <laughs> but... But what Andrew did was, I, I, my brief to him was, by 2015, 2016, we need to be able to pass the due diligence. You know, these, the, 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 the acquirers don't look back more than five years, thank goodness for that, because uh, if they did, they'd find rotten shoes. Um, and, and so Andrew did that, and to say he's successful would be an understatement, because we've just gone through two and a half due diligences, and the feedback we had, which I can only assume is true, is that we, we passed with flying colors, and, and rarely so. Um, the, the, these, these, these large uh, kind of um, multinational organizations are, are, are used to buying entrepreneurial companies, and they're used to them being run uh, in quite a shambles. Andrew being a lawyer, him and I boxed a lot. He's tight, I'm loosey-goosey, but that's quite a partnership. And once again, strengths and, 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 uh, and weaknesses complementing each other. And uh, he did a phenomenal job in our business to the point where he, as he would put it, de-risked a lot of it, uh, put a lot of processes in place, corporate governance. I mean, that term actually makes me feel a bit vomitous. But um, he loves it. He gets up in the morning, he's like, woo, corporate governance. And uh, that's great. You know, we, we needed that in our business. Um, and so that is my, my next le lesson, is, is that even if you're never for sale, uh, you never know when the opportunity might strike, so be saleable. Um, which brings me to my next point, is that businesses struggle to innovate internally. So, over the years, we had also been a kind of an entrepreneurial playpen, as we were. We built a few other businesses, so uh, we started a software business called Brandseye, another uh, crowdsourcing platform called Idea Bounty, and... Um, over kind of three or four years, these businesses did okay. They kind of washed their face. But the reality was they were built with the spare capacity of an agency. And then, I think in about 2011, I read the second most impactful book of my career. The first was Maverick by Ricardo Semler. If you read it, you'll see why Quirk is Quirk. Um, and this book was called The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen. And, and the, the principle of the book, I won't go into the hows and what's and why's and wherefores, but the principle of the book is businesses cannot innovate internally. Not always true, but it is pretty true. So I read this book, and I was like, I am such an idiot. And so I, uh, I got these businesses an office. We started a thing called Quirk Labs, put them in their own space, uh, gave them some kind of targets, gave them a budget, and told them to go and break the rules, don't ask for permission, and just get to where you need to go. And it's incredible how much more successful, I, don't, I wouldn't consider them successful, but how much more successful those businesses have become since we pushed them outside of the core of what was a very large and, um, and, and different functioning beast uh, in Quirk. Uh, and I learned a big lesson on that day, and I'll, that is a lesson I've not, a, a mistake I've not repeated, um, and it served us very well. And my, my, in about 2011, um, I noticed that our uh, traditional agency competitors were starting to get restless. They were starting to buy digital agencies, and in certain cases, they were actually starting to get quite good at digital marketing. And if I look at someone, for example, like Ogilvy, um, 
it's just incredible how, how much they've achieved in digital. I would consider them one of the best digital agencies in the country today. Uh, and how they've achieved it, they ha actually haven't d done any massive acquisitions. Um, and I started looking at this and I said to myself, um, what is our future here? You know, we've been riding this wave. Is, is this wave just about to crash on the beach and kind of roll into irrelevance? Uh, why would a client use two agencies? Um, there are no TV agencies. I don't know many of them. In 10 years' time, why would there be a digital agency? And that started to bother me. And so I felt that at the end of the day, what clients wanted was good marketing. Um, in a digital world, that's very important. You need to understand the world of digital. And, and that is something that I think Quirk has a, as a, at its very core. But at the end of that, it's about good marketing. And it shouldn't matter whether it's on TV or radio or the Twitter. Um, it's just about a good marketing solution. And I felt that we needed to go beyond digital. And so we took a bit of a risk, a financial risk. And I'm, I'm always, if I find a, a, what I call a Geronimo, someone who comes to your door um, and you kind of have to hire them, I always put my salary at risk. Uh, it actually very rarely kicks me in the teeth. But um, at that point, we hired two key people, a chap called Con Burtish, uh, who is the executive creative director at JWT, and a, a lovely lady called uh, Fran Luckin, who is the ECD at Ogilvy. And we brought them into our business in Joburg and Cape Town, and we said, Make us full service. You know, don't, don't forget the digital core that we are, but do whatever it takes to turn this business on its head. And that's exactly what they did. And look, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't easy. Uh, you know, we, we were kind of moving in a, in a particular direction, and they wanted us to go and kind of go off at 30 degrees. And at the time, it was like birthing a grumpy octopus. Um, but we find ourselves today, and, and I was just reviewing some creative work yesterday, and whilst I still think we have a way to go, I'm actually just blown away by how much the, the creative culture within our business has changed. And I think it's because we allowed them to break stuff in order to become a better business. And so my, my next lesson is about loving change. Uh, it's very Darwinian, you know, the, the most adaptable to change survive, but I find so many people and so many organizations, and often the, often the most ex more experienced you are or the bigger your organization, the more inherently uh, averse you are to change. And I think in this world, particularly when you're operating in technology, um, it's changing all the time and you have to be ready for that change. And I'm very glad we, we did that. And then kind of getting to the end, um, Late last year, or middle of last year, um, the, the kind of the acquisition talk started hotting up, and we had a particular girl that, um, you know, was uh, giving us some strong advances. And so we went on a few dates, and uh, that was very nice, uh, but we didn't take it that seriously, if I'm honest. We, we were just never in that frame of mind. And then late last year, you know, this is the nature of girls, you know, when you've got one, the others want a piece of the action. And at one point... Um, we had about six girls flirting with us, and we still didn't take it fully seriously, but when it got to six, we thought, maybe there's an opportunity here to do a deal on our terms, and to do a deal that, that protects what's special about Quirk, the, our, our culture, most importantly, our, our operations, protects our people, but also gives a whole world of opportunity beyond that. And I think it's fairly obvious to say, when you have, you know, choice, six choices, it gives you a little bit more power. And... Um, so we decided to explore this a bit further with the particular girl we'd been dating. Uh, unfortunately, that particular girl uh, discovered that we had been chatting to other girls. Um, and uh, she got very nasty and jealous. And at that point, we thought, well, no one wants to sleep with you. Uh, and actually, we probably, we probably would have married her, um, but, but she showed us her true colors. And luckily, there was this other girl who we'd admired for years. And... Um, I got to know them, and, and I just never felt that they maybe had the stomach or the stamina for us, but we decided to explore it. And suffice to say, I stand here today uh, having married this girl, and um, I don't think we could have got a better deal for ourselves, for our business, for our clients. I, I, every time I read our share purchase agreement, I have a kind of a giggling inside me because I'm actually shocked that we pulled it off. And... Um, and here I find myself today, beginning the next phase of Quirk. Uh, I see this as like a more exciting chapter two. You know, last week we built a, 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 a rover with a quadrocopter on top and sonar and cameras in the front so we could explore our new office from the current office. I like doing stuff like that. And for me, even though the shareholders are different, the adventure remains the same. We still want to change the world. And finally, I have one more lesson for you guys. And that's to just fucking do it. You know, the amount of times you guys have stood around a braai or a dinner table and someone has said, I wish they would invent this. And who's this they? It's like this thing in the sky that also hands out cash. Um, it does not exist. 
And um, it's you that has to invent this. And, and for me, I mean, apart from the, the, the societal and economic benefits of entrepreneurship, I think it was Obama who said uh, uh, we should uh, get out the way and let entrepreneurs fix the economy. I believe that fundamentally to be true. Uh, being an entrepreneur is fun. And the younger you are, the easier it is to do. When I talk at graduations, my only advice is do not get a job. And every parent sits there going, oh my God, what are you saying to my child? But um, I would encourage all of you guys to, to give it a crack. And you will fail. I mean, that's the, that's the truth. You've got a, maybe a 99% chance of failure. But, um, but nevertheless, you will not regret it. Um, if you look back 10 years on, let's say you, you, you spent a year trying to, to start a business, you'll look back on that and you'll definitely know that you learned more in that year than you learned in the 10 years hence. But you will have, have probably have had the best fun in that year. And if, if, if I can do nothing but get 1% of you today to try and start a business, I would have considered today successful. So thank you very much. 